coverage you can count on. KOMU 8 News Today starts now. Good morning, Mid-Missouri. I'm Angie Bailey. Today is Tuesday, July 7th. I'm Megan Judy. Welcome to KOMU 8 News Today on another hot July forecast, mm -hmm. right, Tim? Yeah, that's right. We get another day of heat and humidity. All those people that were like those arcs. Happening overnight, Columbia City Council has now passed an ordinance 6 to 1 enforcing Columbia residents to wear a mask at all times. KOMU 8's Mickey Neiman's live right now to explain what's next. Good morning, y'all. So I am live outside of City Hall, where last night a decision was made about masks. And what did they decide? Well, starting July 10th, if I'm not wearing this, there's a price to pay. The decision came just after midnight, after hours of debating. But it came down to passing a 6 to 1 vote. Starting at 5 p.m. on July 10th, anyone 10 years old and above must wear a mask at all times while in public places. This includes hallways inside apartment buildings and offices where people cannot pass one another without being six feet apart. Now, one Columbia resident we spoke to told us she believes this is the best way to make an impact on our numbers. So I'm really pleased because this is the safest thing our council could do right now. Require masks get people wearing them and get our case numbers down. Again, I am fine not wearing this mask right now, but starting on Friday, if I don't have this on, there will be a $15 fine. Live in Columbia, I'm Mickey Neiman, KOMU 8 News. And Boone County has 15 new positive COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours, meaning there are now 166 active cases. Boone County has passed 500 total cases. Saline County has 21 active cases with 300 total so far. Statewide, there have been 420 new cases reported in the last 24 hours. There are nearly 24,000 cases total, and there have been 1,028 deaths. Back in March, the first case of COVID-19 was reported in Boone County. Here's a look at the model showing how the case rates increasing in Boone County. The amount of time it takes to reach each 100 case milestone is cut in half. The first 100 cases took 55 days and the amount of time it takes to hit increments of 100 only gets smaller from there. Cole County will kick off day one of the two-day COVID testing event. It's free and it's open to any Missouri resident and it has minimal requirements. The testing opportunity is different from what Cole County has seen before. This time you don't need a doctor ordered test and you do not have to have any of the major symptoms to be eligible for testing. Usually Cole County residents only have the chance to be tested at the hospital. Now it's an easy and free drive through opportunity. One health official in Cole County says even if you get a negative test result, you should not disregard regard the possibility of testing positive later. Also understanding that this test does only tell you if you have an active infection. So it's not to say that because you get tested and you're negative one day that you won't be positive the next. You know, so um, just understand that, that it's not going to, you know, don't, don't change your preventative measures just based on these lab results. For more information and to find out how you can register, head to KOMU.com. 15 more Columbia City employees now know how to assist with contact tracing. This brings the total number of contact tracers to 44, which is still at least 10 below the CDC's recommended amount. Contact tracers reach out to those in close contact with someone who's tested positive. Last week's spike in Boone County cases overwhelmed the department. Contact tracers used to reach out to contact lists within 24 hours. Now it's 48. The department trained more people to help yesterday. The senior planner for Boone County's health department says this will give a little bit of relief, but the numbers and therefore the lists just keep rising. It's a labor intensive process. Um, anytime we have to communicate with somebody that there's the opportunity for, you know, you don't get an answer, you have to leave a voicemail, wait for a call back. So it can take some time. And uh, frankly, the cases are coming in uh, faster right now than we're able to keep up. Guess also anticipates the number of cases to rise after the 4th of July weekend. He says more tracers might be needed and might need to be recruited once the county sees that spike. Update on a shooting that left three people hurt and two people dead, including an 11 year old girl. Officers have now detained a 16 year old male in connection with the double homicide that took place near Volunteer Drive and Grace Lane in Columbia. The suspect's been handed over to juvenile office authorities. He's been charged with two counts of second degree murder, two counts of armed criminal action, and two counts of unlawful use of a weapon. The two victims were 38 year old Tara Needler and Rajanay, who was 11 years old. The child's mom said 
Rajane loved to dance, and her smile could make anyone's day. Police say this might have started over a fight about fireworks. A community leader over the weekend demanded change. Those people in that community are wanting for leadership. They're wanting for change. Nobody wants to live on that block where the little kids are being shot. Nobody wants bullets flying through their windows. We wanted to know why police drove four patients to the hospital as ambulance crews waited nearby. MU Healthcare says its paramedics waited for, all, for the all clear of the scene, knowing that it was secure then. An MU spokesperson described it as a chaotic scene, and all agencies involved will meet this week to talk about response. Missouri State Highway Patrol reported a total of six deaths over the holiday weekend in Missouri. Five of those were traffic related. The Highway Patrol reported one person drowned, but there were no boating deaths. Highway Patrol worked a total of 294 traffic crashes and nine boating accidents. Last year had the same number of boating crashes and fatalities, but there were two more drownings. The Marys County Sheriff's Office is working to identify human remains found near the Gasconade River on Sunday. In a Facebook post, the Sheriff's Office says it's currently following up on leads and it expects to have the remains identified soon. They're believed to be a man about 50 years old. Officials say they don't know if foul play is involved. And Governor Mike Parson signed a bill that increases prison sentences and eliminates probation for certain violent crimes. Senate Bill 600 increases minimum sentencing requirements for armed criminal action. If the crime is committed with a firearm, someone has illegally, and it eliminates the eligibility of probation for second-degree murder and some dangerous felonies if the person has a past conviction. Prosecutors can now also charge people with both conspiracy to commit a crime and the criminal act itself. For a complete breakdown of all of these things included in the new bill and the financial implications, go to KOMU.com. All right, pr high pressure is overhead, and it's going to lead to more sunshine today. It keeps all of our storms up north for a couple more days. Coming up, I have the details on another very warm forecast for central Missouri. Coming up, hundreds of businesses have been pulling advertising from Facebook today. Facebook's responding. Here's a live look over Columbia as the sun's coming up out there. It's 538 on your Tuesday morning. A flash flood in Philadelphia left cars and homes damaged today. A powerful storm caused roads to flood, power outages, and other damage to the Philadelphia area. The flooding was so bad in some areas, water rescues were reported. Water is expected to flow off the roads later tonight. That looks like a mess, Tim. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, they, they had a lot of rain yesterday, and what it was from, just continuous rounds of rainfall, but just slow-moving storms. Just, just kind of sitting over the top of them. We had some of that stuff even over the weekend. Yeah. The weak jet stream wind. Winds. The winds at about 20. Thousands of international students pursuing higher education in the U.S. may have to leave if their colleges go to online only classes. The U.S. is not issuing visas to students enrolled in schools that are fully online for the fall semester. Immigration and Customs Enforcement says students who fall under certain visas may not be able to study in the U.S. In some circumstances, some exchange or foreign students may not be able to study in the U.S. or return home because of the pandemic. A billboard in Utah has been defaced with a new message, a poster with the words, the new Jim Crow, followed by slavery, don't pass it on, dot com. It covered up the original billboard, which features a police officer and a message about bravery with the website, pass it on, dot com. The Foundation for a Better Life designed the billboard to thank first responders. The organization has not yet commented on the recent defacement. Happening today, Mark Zuckerberg scheduled to meet with organizers of an ad boycott against Facebook. The advertising boycott's been gaining traction with hundreds of businesses pulling advertising from Facebook in response to Facebook's handling of hate speech. It's not clear whether Facebook will see a big impact on its revenue. They have plenty of money. They got plenty of advertisers. I think Facebook has 8 million advertisers. So this is just a drop in the bucket to them. Facebook has laid out some plans to, quote, crack down on voter suppression and to fight hate speech. President Trump's disapproving sports team's attempts at being, quote, politically correct. Trump called out the Washington Redskins and the Cleveland Indians in a tweet after both teams recently announced potential name changes. He also mentioned NASCAR's decision to ban the Confederate flag. President Trump falsely accused NASCAR's only black driver of orchestrating a hoax after a team member of his team found a noose in his garage. Well, look, the FBI, as I noted, concluded uh, that this was not a hate crime, uh, and he believes it'd go a long way if um, Bubba came out and acknowledged that as well. 
Even though the president has asked for Bubba Wallace to apologize, Wallace acknowledged the FBI determined the noose had been in the garage since last year. The White House press secretary also insisted Trump was not expressing support for the Confederate flag. In response to Trump's accusations, Wallace tweeted, Always deal with the hate being thrown at you with love. The tweet offered advice for young people who may want to follow in the driver's footsteps. Wallace tweeted, you will always have people testing you, seeing if they can knock you off your pedestal. He ended his message saying, love wins over hate. Military leaders are working on a plan that would ban the Confederate flag from being displayed at any military bases. They say the flag's divisive and gets in the way of fighting units coming together as a team. The ban would pit the Joint Chiefs of Staff and senior military leaders against President Trump, who has defended Confederate symbols. The draft has not been formally approved yet. More retailers are pulling Washington Redskin merchandise from online stores. Target and Walmart will no longer sell the items, including shirts, hats, and other memorabilia. Nike chose to do the same thing last Thursday. The commissioner of the NFL, Roger Goodell, says in a statement to the league, it's having ongoing discussions with team owner Daniel Snyder and are supportive in the important step. Happening today, Americans are sending a message at the checkout counter for a day of protest. Today is Blackout Day, an economic protest encouraging shoppers to buy only from black-owned businesses. Blackout Day comes after protests against police brutality and racial injustice. It started in 2015 to combat negative stereotypes. Yesterday, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp declared a state of emergency in Atlanta and activated 1,000 National Guard troops. This was in response to a weekend of violence that left five people dead, including an eight-year-old girl. Troops will provide support for certain locations, like the Capitol and the Governor's Mansion, in order to allow police officers to patrol other areas. A move by the Supreme Court excludes the controversial Keystone XL expansion, but it fast-tracks the permitting process for other projects. The justices ruled the Keystone XL pipeline must still abide by the strict environmental review process. The exclusion of Keystone XL is a major defeat for Trump, who had made good on a campaign promise to move forward with the project that, with that process. It could jeopardize the pipeline's existence depending on the outcome of the 2020 election. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden has pledged to rescind the permit for Keystone if he wins. The Supreme Court ruled unanimously that members of the Electoral College cannot go rogue and must vote according to their state law. The decision just came months before the 2020 election. Writing for the court, Justice Elena Kagan says that the Constitution gives states far-reaching authority over choosing presidential electors and setting conditions for them. Laws in 32 states and Washington, D.C. require electors to vote for the popular vote winner. The U.S. is considering banning Chinese social media apps, including popular app TikTok. That's according to the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. In an interview on Fox News on Monday, Pompeo said the president is looking at that ban. It comes after one week after India banned TikTok and other Chinese apps. Officials say the apps pose a threat to India's sovereignty and integrity. Just hours after Pompeo's announcement, TikTok announced it's going to stop running in Hong Kong. TikTok says it's because of the new controversial national security law there. In mainland China, there's a different version of TikTok. It's unclear if a Chinese version of the app will be available for users in Hong Kong. Here's what's happening right now. More on that national security law that Angie just mentioned. Hong Kong's leader, Carrie Lam, just defended that law for the city today, insisting it would not undermine human rights and freedoms. Here's a look at what she just had to say a few moments ago. Ultimately, um, time and facts will tell that this law will not undermine human rights and freedoms. This law will restore stability to Hong Kong. This law will ensure that this very important principle of one country, two systems can continue and Hong Kong can enjoy long-term stability and prosperity. Now, Megan, Angie, critics see the new law as Beijing's boldest step yet to erase that legal firewall between the former British colony and the mainland's authoritarian communist party system. Guys? All right, Jordan, thank you very much. Washington State will be required to wear a mask out in public. The statewide order goes into effect this morning. All workers were required to wear face coverings since the beginning of June unless they don't interact with others. The 4th of July weekend included wild party scenes, one of them in the state that was hit hardest by the pandemic. Take a look at this party video from Fire Island, New York. Social distancing and face coverings nowhere to be found. Governor Andrew Cuomo expressed his disapproval. You see it in Manhattan, you see it on Fire Island, 
Uh, there are reports upstate of gatherings where people aren't socially distanced and people aren't wearing masks. You know, I don't know how else to say it. Uh, actions have consequences. Texas saw its second highest day of new cases over the weekend. The mayor of Austin says his city is two weeks away from running out of hospital beds. There's a lesson to be learned, I think, in what's happened in Texas in May and June. Uh, we opened up uh, in ways that were not sustainable, uh, and now we're, we're having to, to, to turn that curve. Infection rates are steady in 14 states. Only four states, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Kentucky, and New Hampshire, are seeing declines in new cases. Pay attention to that's coming up next. You might have seen this one. The black bear that gained national attention while traveling from Wisconsin to look for a mate has now been transported to a safe habitat after ending up in Missouri. Bruno the bear gained some online following after traveling more than 600 miles through several states in the last month. Last week, Bruno crossed the Mississippi into Missouri, but then got trapped between I-70 and I-40 in Wentzville. That's when conservation workers immobilized Bruno and brought him to a nearby habitat more suitable for him. Bruno's, Bruno's just looking for some love. Exactly. He's long traveled Bruno. I know. I mean, it's him. very, you know, he, very I hope they have some mates for him in that new habitat. Now it's time for KMU8's top eight stories making headlines in the day ahead. Starting Friday at 5 p.m., you'll be required to wear a mask in public in Columbia or else you could be fined. The Columbia City Council passed the ordinance late last night. Everyone 10 years and older could face a fine of $15 for not wearing a mask. 15 more Columbia City employees now know how to assist with contact tracing. The health department says more tracers will be needed if there's another spike in cases after the holiday weekend. And officers have detained a 16-year-old male in connection to a double homicide on Sunday morning. The suspect's been handed over to juvenile authorities. He's facing charges of second-degree murder, armed criminal action, and unlawful use of a weapon. Community members gathered last night at a vigil for the victims of the double homicide. The two victims were 38-year-old Tara Needler, who was 38, and Rajane, who was 11. Police believe the shooting started over a fight about fireworks. Governor Parson signed a law our target 18 brought to light. It came more than two years after we uncovered a flawed coroner system. The new law will update training requirements for coroners. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said late last night the U.S. is considering banning Chinese social media apps, including the popular app TikTok. It comes about one week after India banned TikTok and other Chinese apps. Today's Blackout Day is an economic protest encouraging shoppers to buy only from black-owned businesses. Blackout Day comes after protests against police brutality and racial injustice. It started in 2015 to combat negative stereotypes. The president and first lady will discuss how to safely reopen schools during a pandemic today. He'll provide his take on when and how schools should reopen. President Trump tweeted his support for schools opening in the fall. And that's your top eight stories that you're going to want to know about and keep up with in your Tuesday ahead. All right, a check of your four.